Getting the best start in Valheim is easy, and it all starts in the spawn location where you can find everything you need to complete the first three steps of my 18 step guide. First things first, food is the key to our survival. Behind the dragon and the skeleton king's giant stones, there will always be two mushrooms and two raspberries fresh for picking. Add these to your inventory with the interact button, hit tab to open your inventory and click on them to eat. We will fill that third food slot a little later. Unlike most survival games, you cannot die from hunger in Valheim, but rather food serves to increase your health and stamina with each food prioritizing a specific stat based upon the color of the fork in the corner of the food. Health providing you with additional hit points and stamina allowing you to run, sprint, and fight for longer. That said, your viking will slowly digest this food, reducing the benefit provided from it. In time, the food in your food slots will begin to flash, indicating their effects will soon expire. This is your signal that your body can now accept new food to replenish your strength. For this reason, we will need to keep our food stockpiles high to satisfy our hunger as needed. Next, pick up the three wood and two stone within the sacrificial stones. You will notice while picking up items, you do unlock new recipes. In short, ensure you pick up and interact with everything you see across the world of Valheim. Craft the hammer with the wood and stone as the hammer is the key tool required for building. Before leaving the ring of stones, interact with with the Vegvasir runestone, adding the location of the first of Valheim's six bosses to your map. Future bosses will each have their own Vegvasir stones hidden in their native biomes. At this point, you can leave the stone circle to find five stone and two wood. These can be found on the ground, or you can bash saplings for additional wood. The torch provided is an excellent tool for breaking the saplings quickly, left clicking to attack them. With the resources gathered, place your hammer in your hotbar and equip it. Left click to use it and select the campfire placing it anywhere on the ground. Sit beside the fire using the X key at which point you should see a status effect appear in the top right of your screen labeled resting. Any buff or debuff you do receive in Valheim will be displayed in the top right of your screen and you can always open up your compendium to see a detailed explanation of the current effects you are under. Rest here for 20 seconds, at which point you will see another buff pop into the top right called the Rested Buff. This buff gives you vastly improved stamina and health regeneration, which is critical to your survival. You may have noticed a comfort level number next to the resting effect buff. This number dictates how long of a rested buff you will receive. Stay tuned as I will cover how to increase that number a little later. For now, whenever your rested buff expires, place down a new campfire and have a seat to quickly regain it. However, keep in mind if an enemy like a grayling or a boar are nearby, you will need to slay them first. Otherwise, the progress of getting this buff will be interrupted. Slain graylings will give you resin used later for arrows, while boars, well, we will get to them shortly. The torch will work wonders at dispatching these early game creatures. That said, both are afraid of fire and will likely be a nuisance to finish, constantly retreating from the flame. Similarly, if it happens to be raining, the wet status inflicted upon you will both give you a painful debuff, but also prevent you from getting the rested effect. If that is the case, you won't be able to easily get this buff, so skip this step for now. With your rested buff acquired, start heading toward a water source. There is a good chance you can see water from your spawn location, and if not, check your map for the path the Valkyrie took while dropping you off. If flown over water, that could provide you a clue as to which direction you should go. If not, Valheim is composed of islands, so simply pick a direction and you will soon find the coast. When traveling, pick up stones, sticks, mushrooms, and raspberries. And if you see any wooden structures on your travels, Open your map and mark and name their location as we will want to return to them later. I recommend avoiding combat for now until we craft better weaponry. As you reach the shore, you will see shiny silver flint located at the water's edge. We will need six of these for our task at hand. If you happen to see slimy neck, avoid them if you can. These spawn near water sources and while they do provide another food source in neck tails, there are better food sources out there that we will get to shortly. With flint acquired, it is time we begin to establish our first base. Ideally, you will have seen a wood structure on your travels and marked it on your map. These serve as excellent starting bases. Before entering, check for a beehive. You'll hear their buzzing if nearby. These can be lethal in the early game, but fortunately, I have a trick for dealing with them. 
Equip your hammer and select the workbench for building, assuming you have the required 10 wood and place it nearby. With the hammer still equipped, point at the wood structure supporting the bees and hit the middle mouse button to deconstruct the structure, causing the hive to break. Beehives drop both the queen bee and honey, excellent early stamina food. The queen bee, on the other hand, will be used later to build her own honey producing beehives. Of course, if no bees inside, deconstruct your original workbench same as you did with the supporting structure, and rebuild it inside. You do always receive the full cost of your built structures when deconstructing, so no wasted materials here. Workbenches do require shelter to be interacted with, and otherwise will tell you it requires a roof or that it is exposed. For this reason, existing huts make for a quick shelter without having to spend our precious wood on building. However, the huts are often damaged or incomplete. With your workbench down, hover over the damaged wall and roof pieces where you will see a bar showing their durability. If not filled, left click on them to repair. Keep in mind, repairing does not cost any resources. And of course, select and build the required roof pieces using the snap buttons shown on the bottom of your screen to find the right placement to fill any gaps as needed. You may have noticed at this point that most structures require a workbench nearby to be built. The effective radius a single workbench provides for building can be seen as a dotted white line when placing the bench. Keep this in mind when planning your base. Unfortunately, I wasn't so lucky in finding a hut on my way to shore, however, worry not. Set your workbench at the base of a tree, I find the wide oak trees work best, and place two roof pieces above, enabling your access. That said, workbenches can be a bit finicky, so if this does not work, enclose your bench further until allowed to interact. At the workbench, combine your acquired flint and wood for the flint axe. The flint axe is the best early melee weapon and woodcutting tool. For this reason, I forgo crafting the stone axe altogether and focus on getting this axe more quickly. At this stage, we are going to need a bunch of wood, so may as well grind that out now. You will likely notice that when attempting to cut the birch or oak trees, you will see the text, too hard. We won't be able to cut down these trees until we progress to the second biome in the black forest. For now, stick with the beach. Oh, and now my axe broke. Worry not, tools and armor can be repaired free of cost at your workbench. Keep cutting until you have three or four stacks of wood. This should be enough to get us through the meadows. While cutting, be very careful of falling trees as they are unpredictable. Can trigger a cascade of falling trees and if hit, can do a ton of damage if not killing you. If you do die, you will respawn where you were first dropped in as we have not yet set a new respawn point with a bed as we will do so shortly. When dying, you won't lose your items but a tombstone will be left at your death location. Return to your body to reclaim your lost loot. After retrieving your inventory, you do get a sweet buff in the corpse run effect for a brief period. The only major consequence of dying in Valheim is that you do lose experience towards your skills. As you have been playing, you have likely noticed a notification on screen of your skill progress while performing certain tasks. Open your inventory and hover over each to get a brief description of the benefits of an increased level of a particular skill. Anywho, back to our task at hand. With our stacks of wood, let's head... Oh wait, right. Unfortunately, even a viking has a limit to what they can carry. 300 weight is the max after which you will become over encumbered, walking slowly and draining your stamina until you can no longer move. Drop some wood for relief so we can head back to our base as we have some hunting to do. Before heading out, build a chest or two to store your excess wood and other materials clogging up your inventory. With that done, a brief overview of the combat basics in Valheim is in order before we attempt to tackle some boars. First, most weapons have a standard and secondary attack by using the left and middle mouse buttons respectively, with the second attack typically being slower but dealing more damage. You will have to try each of the different weapon classes to get a feel for how they work. Second, you can block by holding down the right mouse button to absorb incoming damage. Better yet, if you time the block precisely with an enemy attack, you will parry the creature. After a parry, you can hit them for bonus damage. Blocking and parrying can be done with any weapon, but also an offhand shield like the craftable wooden shield should you desire further protection. With that out of the way, let's hunt some boar. Boars can be found easily scattered across the biome, but remember they will fight back. Fortunately, with our flint axe in hand, they won't be much trouble. I fortunately got very lucky here and came across a boar rune stone with four boars. These stones are a rare occurrence but always contain a grouping of boars making for great sources of leather scraps and boar meat. Our main goal for hunting boar is acquiring eight leather scraps for our first ranged weapon in the crude bow. I would have liked to find all eight before heading to camp but as you can see the sun is setting and I don't want to get caught out at night. When night falls, more dangerous creatures spawn and become more aggressive. On top of that, if not by a heat source, you will be subject to the cold debuff 
further increasing your vulnerability. Fortunately, we can craft a bed to sleep through the night. Oh, but first, let's build that beehive we mentioned earlier. Over time, this beehive will supply us with some sweet honey. The bed must be sheltered and near a fire, so first things first, we can expand our rugged shelter. Once done, place the bed. If still exposed, the bed will prevent us from setting our new spawn. Otherwise, interact with it, claiming it as our own. Going forward, we will spawn here if we die. And with that, sweet dreams, everyone. See you in the morning. Ugh. Rise and grind, everyone. Today, we have a lot to do. First things first, I will quickly grab the last leather scrap we need from this lonely boar, return to base, and craft the crude bow. Of course, bows need ammunition, so grab some wood from our stores and craft roughly 100 arrows. Before venturing out on our deer hunt, it would be wise to leverage that third food slot I mentioned much earlier. Make sure you have two wood and craft the cooking station over top your campfire. You can craft up to six over a single fire should you want to cook more quickly. That said, two will work nicely for me. Interact with it to place raw meat from your inventory on it. After a few seconds, you will hear a sizzling sound indicating it is cooked and ready for retrieval. Wait too long and you will hear another sizzle, leaving nothing but charcoal. Grab your bow, chow down on the cooked boar meat, and head out to hunt some deer. Unfortunately, the crude bow is terribly inaccurate. As a rule of thumb, aim above and to the right of your target for best results. Remember, drawing down on your bow will consume stamina, so don't hold too long. If having trouble with the bow, there are two other sneaky strategies strategies you can use to capture deer. First, if you have two wood, equip your hammer and select the cooking station recipe. Cooking stations are one of the few buildable structures not requiring a nearby workbench and while enabling cooking can also be used to catch deer. While chasing the deer, precisely place a cooking station to impede their run and smack them with your axe. This is a strategy often implemented by speedrunners. Alternatively, you can press left control and enter a sneak mode. As long as the creature doesn't become alerted, denoted by the red exclamation mark above their heads, you should be able to get close enough to them to slay the deer. I found the secondary attack of your axe used by hitting the middle mouse button usually one hits them. Of course, all that said, in my opinion, the bow is still the best method for deer hunting. Slaying deer will provide you with a new food in deer meat, a new crafting material in deer hide, and most rarely a potential deer trophy of which we will need two to summon the boss. If you happen to stumble across campsites like this, use the trick I showed you earlier. Build a workbench nearby and use your hammer to deconstruct the structure. These are made of core wood a crafting material typically reserved for Valheim's second biome in the Black Forest. Getting this item early can be a big advantage as I'll touch on again shortly. Once you have at least 18 deer hide, return to base to craft the full leather armor. However, you will notice that you still won't see any recipes for the armor I mentioned. The armor requires a level 2 workbench, which can be achieved by building an upgrade. As you progress the game, you will unlock various workbench upgrades, but at this stage, two are available in the chopping block and tanning rack. The chopping block is cheapest, so collect 10 flint and retrieve our wood from earlier and craft the upgrade. With a level 2 workbench, you will have the recipes for the leather armor. Craft the helmet, tunic, and pants and equip them for increased armor. Plus, if you have been lucky enough to find 5 bone fragments at stone structures like these, you can combine them with 4 more deer hide for an additional armor in the deer hide cape. This is the minimum armor you will need to defeat Ikthyr. However, should you want to bolster your equipment for battle with the boss, I will leave the recipes and total materials required for all Meadow's weapons and armor, as well as those required to upgrade each of them. Keep in mind, you will need a level 3 workbench achieved by building the tanning rack for additional upgrades. If not, it's Ikthyr time. Before fighting Ikthyr, you want to make sure the conditions are right. Before sleeping, I must return to the concept of comfort mentioned previously. You can increase its number in a few ways as I will do in the preparation for the boss fight. First, being under the shelter effect provided by having a roof overhead gives you an additional plus one comfort. Second, crafting structures in the vicinity provide additional comfort. One from the campfire, deer hide rug, bed, and finally the sitting log we can only build because we acquired core wood early for a total of six comfort. With each plus one comfort, you receive an additional minute of the rested buff duration with a base of eight giving us 14 minutes. Increasing the rested buff duration should be an absolute priority for any Valheim playthrough. With your comfort room set up, it's time to sleep through the night, giving us our massive rested buff and avoiding the debuff from the cold status at night. Second, do not fight Ikthyr while raining due to the wet debuff applied. Apart from that, equip your leather armor, flint axe, and crew bow. And finally, arm your bow by crafting either flint head or fire arrows. These will require flint, resin, wood, and feathers. You should have the resin from slaying graylings or falling trees, and if short, on feathers, craft wood arrows and shoot landing gulls for plenty. Make your way to Ikthyr's spawn, add a 
frontier map earlier. My choice for optimal food is cooked deer and boar meat combined with honey for a good balance of stamina and health. But wait until you get to the summon location to eat your food to ensure you have the max duration of its effect for the fight. Now, all that's left to do is add the two deer trophies to your hot bar and interact with the shrine summoning Ikthyr. He has three attacks of which you should be aware. First, a melee attack of swinging antlers. You can attempt to dodge his attack by holding block with the right mouse button and hitting the space bar or alternatively, simply sprint out of his way. Second, he shoots lightning in a straight line, which is best avoided by keeping structures between you and him, such as stones and trees. Third, an AoE lightning attack, which can be avoided if timing a dodge precisely, but is best avoided by staying far away out of his range. Once defeated, he will drop his trophy and the deer antler. Deliver his trophy to your spawn location and mount it on his sacrificial stone and interact with it to obtain his forsaken power. As you may now guess, each of the sacrificial stones at your starting spawn represent each of the bosses in Valheim. With each biome clear and boss defeat, you will return here, mount their trophies, and obtain their powerful forsaken powers. In the case of Aegthir, his provides decreased stamina usage while sprinting for you and surrounding players when his power is activated. Next, the antlers dropped can be combined at your workbench with 10 wood for the antler pickaxe. This pickaxe will be essential as you now set your sights on Valheim's second biome, the Black Forest. With the perfect start under your belt, set your sights on Valheim's next next biome with my comprehensive Black Forest guide, or if you want even more detailed Meadows tips, check out this video of 69 beginner tips.